if you're not getting the results that you're looking for despite using a quote-unquote sensitive toothpaste um, there's a good chance that you're doing it wrong in other words you're probably not using the toothpaste in the most effective way possible I'm going to tell you the best way to use sensitive toothpaste to maximize its desensitizing effect and I'll also explain why this is the best way and finally I'll discuss tips about what makes it more and less effective you know most dentists don't actually know about this and toothpaste com companies don't even tell you about it either I'm probably the first person that you'll be hearing this from all right so so let me explain the best way to use uh, sensitive toothpaste you know the best way to do it is to actually use two different toothpastes yes you heard that correctly I do want you to use two different desensitizing toothpaste one right after the other okay so this is the uh, protocol okay the very first thing you should do is you should brush with the sensodyne intent uh, sensodyne pronamel intensive enamel repair for a full two minutes after that you should rinse out and then you want to brush with a, uh, a regular sensodyne toothpaste um, Maybe, maybe not this one. There are like two other ones that I like more than this one. Uh, you should go for the, the Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gums or the Sensodyne Faux Protection. Okay, so for that, you want to you wanna use the Sensodyne toothpaste for two minutes total. And then you want to repeat this routine um, at a minimum in the, the morning and at nighttime okay so you're basically using two different desensitizing toothpaste um, immediately one right after the other so the question you probably have for me is why use two different toothpastes right so in order to understand that you need to um, you need to know that there are actually two different mechanisms via how sensitive toothpaste work okay they either work as a nerve depolarizer or as a tubular occlusion agent okay so just to kind of explain to you a little bit about uh, tooth anatomy you know you you basically have the enamel up top okay and then the root surface is below that the root surface is very sensitive okay if you ever have an exposed root surface the tooth will be extremely sensitive to cold hot sour sweet anything acidic okay but the good news is that for most of us we do have the gums covering the root surface okay so the gums actually reach up to the enamel up to here so the root is typically not exposed but for some unfortunate people the gums do recede and it leaves the root surface exposed and that's usually when you get sensitivity okay so back to the two different types of desensitizing uh, mechanisms and agents okay the very first one is a nerve depolarizer so the the first nerve depolarizer would be uh, potassium nitrate okay as you can see it says anti hypersensitivity so what what this one does is actually it numbs the tooth nerve and what it does is that it the potassium nitrate it travels through these open holes in, in, in the tubules and it goes to the tooth nerve and then from there it actually floods it floods the tooth nerve with a whole bunch of potassium ions and then th this kind of messes up the concentration gradient for uh, action potential generation okay because there is an excessive amount of potassium ions outside uh, you know the whole the whole uh, diffusion across the concentration gradients does not occur and then the tooth nerve cannot fire off pain signals okay so so that is how nerve depolarizing agents work and it is uh, with potassium nitrate all right so the second type of desensitizing mechanism um, actually uses a stannous fluoride okay as you can see here stannous fluoride and if you look to the right the purpose anti-sensitivity um, there are also other types of uh, occlusion agents as well but this one is the most common one so the, the more trendy one would be a uh, hydroxy appetite all right but they kind of work in in this kind of manner all right so you have open exposed dentinal tubules and when you brush with these tubular occlusion agents it literally closes up the holes okay and because it blocks the holes here no stimuli can go in and interact with the nerve okay so so these are uh, two very different mechanisms so here's just like a different schematic where you have like the exposed tubules and then you have these these 
uh, a tubular occlusion agent that's, that kind of just clog up the hole and it prevents things from uh, interacting with the nerve. So these are two different ways that the nerve can be uh, desensitized. And you know, typically most people they'll like jump around from different sensitive toothpastes and they'll kind of find one that works. Um, it mostly has to do with whether or not each one of these uh, works better for you. So everyone is um, is a little bit different. Uh, but in our opinion, why should you only use one desensitizer when you can use both of them, right? I mean, they work in different ways. So if you combine them, they should theoretically be more effective. And don't you agree with me in that, right? And it, it makes a lot of sense to me and it should make a lot of sense to you. So um, the next question you probably have for me is uh, why don't toothpastes combine both desensitizers? Okay, so here we have, you know, uh, the, the Sensodyne toothpastes, they're both by Sensodyne. This one is a pronamel and this one is by Sensodyne, okay? As you can see here in the Sensodyne, they have uh, the Sanus fluoride antihypersensitivity and here we have the pronamel one is potassium nitrate anti-hypersensitivity. But you will not find a toothpaste from them which combines both of them, okay? We could kind of go through all of their toothpastes. Here we have the gentle whitening, right? Potassium nitrate only, no stannous fluoride. And here we have another one, no tea action, potassium nitrate, and sodium fluoride, no stannous fluoride. And here we have another one, the fresh breath, right? Same situation, okay? We could go through all of these Sensodyne toothpastes, right? This one is potassium nitrate as well, no stannous fluoride. And this one is the daily protection. It is potassium nitrate, no stannous fluoride. So, so that is a very common theme that you will uh, kind of find. Sensodyne will never ever mix the two desensitizers together, okay? Um, the reason why they don't combine them is because the, uh, the tubular occlusion agent, stannous fluoride, which, which blocks the holes, right? It will actually interfere with the uh, nerve depolarizer from working, right? So if you think about how they both work, it makes a lot of sense, right? So how the nerve depolarizer works, right? It has to, you need to have these open exposed dentinal tubules for it to kind of uh, diffuse through and travel to the nerve, okay? But if you have something that blocks blocks the exposed tubules, right? It will prevent the nerve depolarizer from reaching the nerve. So, I mean, they could kind of combine them, but if you do, um, the, the nerve depolarizing agent will kind of be um, a little bit wasted, so to speak, right? Because the, the bulk of the effect will be coming from uh, the, 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 the tubular blocking agent rather than the depolarizer. <coughs> So it's because it one of them kind of renders the other one less effective, which is probably why they don't combine both of them. Although, in my opinion, I think even if you do combine both of them, it should still be more effective than using just one on, on, on their own, right? Because even though this one will be kind of blocking up the holes, there, there will be a point in time where some of them are exposed and you will get the nerve depolarizer diffused through, right? Before, the, this one kind of fully blocks up the holes. So an analogy I like to use for that would be like, you know, in the movie scenes where you have like the door closing, right? So the door closing would be the, the blocking agent. But you know, but but some people, there will be a couple that kind of slide underneath the door and kind of make it through, right? And that will have a desensitizing effect. But you know, but they just don't combine them just because they feel like it's not that effective, right? But, so, uh, that's why I came up with a an alternative solution, right? Um, of using them one right after the other, okay? So, um, you know, so the order that you use them is, is really, really important, right? So because the, the, the one that blocks the open tubules prevents the nerve depolarizing from working, the very first thing you should do is actually brush with the depolarizing agent first, right? So the protocol is to brush with the nerve depolarizer for a full two minutes so you allow all of it to kind of travel through to the nerve, okay? And after the two minutes of brushing with this, you can rinse out and then you brush for two minutes with the blocking agent, okay? With the tubular occlusion agent afterwards for two minutes and then you kind of seal up all the holes. That way you get the best of both worlds, right? So you get the nerve depolarization and you get to block up all of the exposed tubules. 
Um, and just to just to be crystal clear, if you reverse the order, right, and you use the blocking agent first, you clog up all the holes, the nerve depolarizer will not work because it won't be able to travel through to the nerve, okay? So the order that you use this in is uh, is, is is really important. Um, the you know the inspiration for this actually comes from um, <laughs> shampoo and conditioner. Have you have you ever noticed that if, when you use the two in ones, the the shampoo and the conditioner, it does not work as well as if you use them separately, right? I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? The shampoo is supposed to clean the grease and dirt out from your hair, but the conditioner is supposed to kind of make it softer and kind of marinate the hair. Okay, so you can't. You can't clean and kind of marinate the hair at the same time. It's kind of like if you were cleaning a turkey and marinating at the same time. Like that, that doesn't work. You have to use them one right after one right after the other. Okay. So I mean, just like how, just like my opinion on how shampoo and conditioner works, right? Separate ones always work better than combined. The same thing for toothpaste. Okay. You have to use them separately for to get the 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 best and most effective. Um, result possible. Um, you may be wondering if it's safe to be brushing so much, right? Because you're really, literally doubling the amount of brushing that you're doing. Um, I would say it is safe as long as you're using like the, the Sensodyne products because research have shown that they do have the lowest uh, abrasiveness out of the major brands of toothpaste out there, um, you you will even notice it as you're kind of brushing with these. The, like the the paste from it is very soft and smooth. There's almost like zero zero gritty texture to them because they're basically non abrasive. Okay, um, I mean you can look up like the the RDA chart, the relative dentin abrasivity chart. Um, you will find that the the Sensodyne toothpaste is to be at the at the very very low end. So what that means is that it is uh, enamel safe okay i mean aside from that um you know research shows that the average american will actually only brush their teeth for 45 seconds compared to um you know the average recommended time of two minutes although uh three minutes of brushing is more effective than two minutes you know and you know typically if you brush for longer it does help your teeth more okay and Generally, as long as you're using a very soft bristle toothbrush, you're not brushing very hard, and you're using a non-abrasive paste, it should be safe to brush for longer and for more frequently, okay? Next, I just want to kind of move on to tips to maximizing uh, the desensitizing effect of these toothpastes. The very first one is that you have to brush the sensitive spots, okay? So here we have like the tooth, right? The diagram of the tooth where the sensitive spots are. The sensitive spots are always down near where the gum line is, where the where the recession and the exposure is, okay? A lot of people when they're brushing, they feel like these spots are sensitive and they kind of um, consciously or subconsciously avoid the spots because they don't want to irritate it. So what they do is instead of instead of brushing down here, they brush up here, okay? But when they brush up here, they're completely missing the sensitive spot down there, okay? If you're not brushing down there, you're not pushing any of the desensitizing agents into the spot and through to the nerve, okay? It is kind of like if you're having foot pain and you're rubbing your head, okay? You're you're completely missing the spot, all right? So the very first tip is you have to brush the sensitive spots. So when you're brushing, make sure you angle the toothbrush and down by the sense the by by the gum line and brush it in to the sensitive areas. Okay, that's how you maximize the desensitizing effect. The second tip is to um, actually to reduce the amount of acidic foods that you consume whenever possible. All right. So when I say acidic, I mean low pH foods and beverages. So this includes sugary. Um, sour, spicy, you know, anything carbonated, all of these things are acidic, okay? The reason why you want to avoid it, aside from the, the fact that when you're drinking it, it kind of hurts you, um, it's also because, you know, the, the tubular occlusion agents, okay, like the like the stannous fluoride, they, they block up these holes, okay? But these blockages get unblocked, unclogged, and these these, these blockages, they, they get um, basically 
you know, they dissolve in the presence of acid. So when you are consuming acidic foods, like these holes will reopen up again after your meal, okay? So when it reopens up again, it will get sensitive, okay? So that's kind of one of the downsides of using the tubular um, occlusion agents, right? You, you do have to continuously keep reapplying it and then after a meal the efficacy does get worse the the good thing about the nerve depolarizer is that it travels through and stays at where the nerve is okay so it, it doesn't really go anywhere um, but of course you know blocking it will immediately prevent um, sensitivity from occurring that's also why um, with if you kind of notice like the sensitive rapid relief toothpaste it'll say it'll It'll give you sensitivity relief within like a day of using it. But the nerve depolarizing agents, you have to use it for at least like a week or two for you to get effect. That's because it needs to build up to a sufficient concentration of where of enough of it travels through to the nerve and kind of build up there for you to start taking an effect. So, so you know, there are like uh, pluses and downs and, and, and minuses for, for each of these desensitizing agents. But that is also why I say you should use both of them instead of using just one because then you can reap the benefits of uh, both worlds. Um, and then that kind of brings me to my, my third tip. Um, you know, if you are consuming a lot of like acidic foods, I highly recommend brushing after every meal, okay? Because, you know, uh, after you brush with toothpaste, the pores get, um, the, the, the tubules get, the, get blocked. And then when you eat, it reopens up, and then you're basically sensitive for the rest of the day. So after after lunch, right, you're sensitive until 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 after dinner time when, when you when you brush again. So but 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 why should you let yourself stay sensitive when you could just brush again after your meal and it's blocking right back up again? And that way you're not sensitive throughout the day. So it does help if you brush after every meal. All right. So, so those are uh, kind of my tips for maximizing the desensitizing effect. But last but not least, I kind of want to leave you a protocol on how to deal with extreme teeth sensitivity, okay? So what you should do if you're having extreme teeth uh, um, sensitivity is you should actually um, use the Sensodyne Pro Enamel Intensive Enamel Repair Toothpaste, okay? Um, rather than kind of brushing with it, you kind of just want to brush to kind of push it into all of the sensitive spot. You're not brushing like you're cleaning your teeth, right? You just want to apply it to every single surface of your tooth, and then you want to leave the toothpaste on your teeth for a minimum of 30 to 45 minutes. Yes, you heard that correctly. I want you to leave this toothpaste on your tooth on your teeth without rinsing for 30 to 45 minutes okay after that you can spit out rinse and then brush with the sensodyne toothpaste for two minutes to um, kind of finish it off and block off all of the pores okay the reason why i'm telling you to leave the intensive enamel repair on for that long is because uh, these desensitizing agents they work based on contact time okay what i mean by that is the longer you leave it on your teeth um the the more effect you will get out of it, okay? It's because these um, desensitizing agents, they work uh, topically, okay? It has to be in contact with the tooth for it to work. So the best analogy I can give you is with like the pain patches, you know, like the salon pass, all right? So the directions are, you know, you if you're, if you're aching anywhere, you leave the patch on for, you know, remove patch from skin after at most eight hour application, right? It stays on your skin for eight hours to for to kind of you know relieve pain right because it is a topical analgesic okay so for pain patches you leave it on for like eight hours but yet we expect the teeth to be desensitized after two minutes of brushing like where is the logic in that you know two minutes is a very very short period of time and i do not blame the toothpaste for not working if you're simply brushing for just a measly two minutes while expecting it to desensitize your teeth completely all right so you know but but you know but the toothpaste do work pretty well and for most people two minutes is enough but for those who are feeling extremely sensitive for whatever reason like you might have had too many glasses of red wine, right? If you do, for those um, you know, extreme scenarios, for extremely sensitive teeth, I would recommend brushing with the intensive enamel repair. Um, leave it on your teeth for 30 to 45 minutes, spit out, rinse, and then brush with the Sensodyne just to block up all of the holes, okay? 
And then that is how you um, really desensitize extremely sensitive teeth. As a matter of fact, that protocol is uh, very similar to um, what the, the core whitening for you know a, a teeth whitening, a professional teeth whitening product. That's what they actually recommend if your teeth get extremely sensitive from whitening your teeth okay i'm just kind of borrowing that but um they they don't tell you to brush your two toothpastes though so that that is my invention um but they do tell you to use for like 30 to 45 minutes with a nerve depolarizing agent all right so just to kind of recap okay what what you want to do is you want to first brush with a nerve depolarizing uh, toothpaste for two minutes and then you want to follow up with a tubular occlusion toothpaste for two minutes and that is how you get the best of both worlds so just to remind you the nerve depolarizing agent is potassium nitrate okay potassium nitrate and the one i recommend using is the sensodyne pro enamel intensive enamel repair okay don't use anything else except this one the uh the formulation is highly optimized for it to work um, i'm not going to go into crazy detail about it but you could read my review about this toothpaste uh, but you know but but the way they formulated this one is is, is really really good um, for the tubular occlusion agent the most common one you can find would be the, the stannous fluoride okay stannous fluoride anti-hypersensitivity um, you can get the one from sensodyne not this particular one if you want the most effective one i would recommend the sensodyne uh, complete protection or the sensodyne sensitivity and gum like those two formulations are a bit more optimized than than this one here i mean you can still use this one but it, it will be slightly less effective all right so i do recommend recommend the the, the ones that are um, more optimized all right and yeah, so so that is the the secret to using sensitive toothpaste. Um, follow my protocol to make sure that you're not doing it wrong. All right.